Today I'm out in the shop installing new brakes on a 2015 Honda CRV. I'm going to install new rotors, pads, and calipers on this 2015 CRV. Now, if you're going to do the front brakes on a 2008 to 2016 Honda CRV, then this video is for you. At the Styles Automotive channel, I have many other videos showing general automotive work, modifications, and tips. If you find this video helpful, please consider subscribing and watching the other videos. To do this job, in addition to the brake components that you need, you're also going to need some tools. You can either use combination wrenches or ratchets. I like to use ratchets, so a couple of ratchets. I like to use this long uh, swivel ratchet instead of a breaker bar. It's a uh, max so it's got a lifetime warranty so it, if i can abuse it a little bit like a breaker bar uh c clamp to work that piston back into the caliper a little bit make it easier to, for that old caliper to come off a 12 millimeter socket to take off the hose mounting bolt um, a 14 millimeter socket that's for the caliper slide bolt and that's not for the original stock caliper but for the ray vestus new ray vestus caliper it's a 14 millimeter. It's also a 14 millimeter banjo bolt for on the connection of the hose to the caliper. And then a 19 millimeter socket caliper mounting bolts. A 10 millimeter combination wrench for the bleeder valve to bleed the brakes. Some brushes, a brake cleaner to clean up the components as you disassemble them. I like to start by prepping the new caliper take off the 14 millimeter head size bolts it already has the new slides the little clips for the slides notice in shipment this one has come off Let's make sure it's it's well seated and usually what I like to do is I like to load the brake pads into here but uh, for the CRV they don't stay very well so I'm gonna install them on the car after I have the rotor in but we can we can prep this one and it comes pre-lubed the slide pins come pre-lubed I'm just gonna use my fingernail pull these out and use a good nickel anti-seize and you can go ahead and pull these all the way out and I like to add a little more lube they don't come with enough lube. It always seems like my Fords especially get dry over the lifetime of the pads. So I like to load up this um, bellows and the pin with a little bit of high temperature anti-seize. Makes a good grease. They're already greased, but this just ensures they stay wet. Slide it back in and then just push that rubber bellows back up pull the pin out and as you're pulling use your fingernail pull that bellows down and pull it all the way out notice the one pin is different than the other that one's got uh, kind of a sliding different sliding surface than this one so again I'm loading the inside with a little bit of anti-seize and in the bellows a little more on the pin just to make sure they stay wet and I'm just gonna put it just a little bit these get dirty anyway so it's probably not a big deal but just a little bit on the sliding surfaces just to help the pads slide during their break in you put a little bit on the, the threads here if you want but I, I usually put anti-seize on, on everything on my brake components. I either put Loctite, the red heavy duty Loctite on things, or I put the good nickel anti-seize, the high temperature nickel. And to me, it doesn't make any sense to use the aluminum anti-seize. So you got dissimilar metal of steel and aluminum and you're putting anti-seize on it to prevent that prevent corrosion and you're putting aluminum anti-seize on it just really doesn't make any sense to me so i'm gonna put my bolts 
on a pan. And here's here's one of the reasons why you can't really load the this caliper before you put it on the car. It's got these little spring clips to force the two pads apart. They go here in the holes on the pad just to give a little bit extra oomph to push it apart. Probably time lapse this for you, but I'm just taking off the extra washer so you get the little brass washers come with a new caliper so when you're replacing the banjo fitting you got a couple of new washers then take those off so then you don't have to do it on the car it's kind of a pain and then the rubber protective cap it's on your bleeder valve take that bad boy off set it aside so you can take the pan over to the car and 10 millimeter hex on your uh, caliper bolt take that off and let's see I take it all the way out put a little anti-seize on it that way I don't know if you ever had a bleeder valve that's been stuck in a caliper on an older car and you're trying to get it out Trying to drill it, use vice grips on it. Well, a little nickel anti seize on it. You don't need it. There's the ceiling surface down there. Don't get it, you don't need it on the ceiling surface. You'll contaminate your brake fluid a little bit. But it's like taking it. There's a lot of threads there. So if it's stuck, if it's dirty and stuck, there's a lot of threads to have to overcome. So it's nice if the next time. You service this car and you want to bleed the brakes if someone's done that especially use the high temp on this because the calipers do get hot a lower temperature anti-seize will probably dry up on you okay so that's it we can take all these components over to the car and like I said I normally I would load the pads into the bracket especially on a Ford it's nice because they'll stay and you can do that here but the chances are they'll they'll pop out on you so I'll show you how to do that over in the car yeah so bring everything over here to the car <clears throat> I like to put things on a tray so I don't lose them And if you pan underneath everything, I'm gonna clean everything off. Make sure you got a pan. And then I'm gonna be removing the brake hose and it's gonna leak fluid on us. So I'm gonna start with a hose mounting bolt there. It's a 12 millimeter, both front and rear, both on the front suspension and on the rear of the car. That's a 12 millimeter bolt. Anyway, I'll uh, time lapse this for you. Right, so I'm replacing the caliper. So when the caliper's still tight, I wanna loosen that uh, 14 millimeter banjo bolt and it's gonna drip, it's the only thing, but it's easier to loosen that when, you're, uh, when your caliper's tight. So you don't have to take it all the way out just loosen it so it's ready to go and then uh, let's see we can turn this without going using the steering wheel so I can get to these big caliper mountain bolts back here they're 19 millimeter right here
like to use a deep well socket on most things and these uh, impact are six point which keep you from spoiling the bolts as soon as you got them broke loose they come out pretty easy still pretty nice threads they stay pretty clean in the car That one's a little dirty. I should probably use my brake cleaner a little more liberally. It's okay. Yeah, so once I take that one all the way out, I'm gonna loop my caliper will come right out so I'm gonna finish taking off this banjo bolt and my brake hose is just gonna drip into the pan remember there's two of those uh, brass washers on this make sure you count for both <clears throat> you don't want to double up washers on the um, on the banjo fitting so there's one on the inside, one on the outside, and one stayed on the caliper. I don't know if you can see that. One is still on the outside of the fitting here. And I want to use the new ones that came with the cal new caliper. Very best this caliper. There it goes. Dropped in the pan. So put that back out of the way. It's going to continue to gravity feed from the reservoir. I mean, losing brake fluid for a while. But that's okay. I want to change out the brake fluid, but clean brake fluid in it anyway. So again, to get that bolt out, it's gonna come come right off. Dirty old mess. Now this car has about a hundred thousand miles on it, and I didn't think the brakes had ever been done before, which is pretty amazing. But, so it's got a uh, Phillips head screw in here to to locate that uh, rotor. I guess I could leave that. I'm trying to get you a better view. Let's get a screw in it here. Yeah, and in true in automotive applications. It's not truly a Phillips. Okay, little PB blaster and some English coming off. All right, so brake cleaner, wire brush. Surfaces are really pretty good. And this, on the other hand, could afford to be cleaned up a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to hold that on with a, the rotor on with a lug nut. I ruined that screw taking it out. Okay, 19 millimeter um, caliper mounting bracket. Bolts. Two of them. The caliper mounting bracket back on. That's sure nice clean threads on a brand new bracket again make sure that the all the clips are still on here
And, oops. Those are like new bolts. If you haven't been taken off before. Dirty heads or something. Socket's really tight on them. Okay, let's reposition. Different position here. So normally the inside one or the piston side, it's got a marker on it or a you know little indicator on it to tell you when the pads are worn out. So here's what I mean. It's like they, they fit in here pretty sloppily. So to uh, so they go right in. And so they would fall right out also. So it's better to just put them in in the car. Now, that bottom clip doesn't want to stay in. Go. Go. And now you got to put these little springs in. This helps the pads move back out so you don't have a sticky caliper but then you got the you got to hold the pads somebody's probably made a tool for this but if you just hold it with two hands and or with two fingers rather with one hand and then bring the caliper in and you can let go then you got to worry about your the slide pins being positioned correctly and then just line up one or the other of the bolts and this one they're indexed right here they're indexed on the pin here i don't know if you can see that go up just a smidge right here they're indexed so you don't have to use a wrench to hold it like the backs the slide pins back there suck they can turn but you can usually just hold them with your fingers you don't have to put a wrench on them but for these since they're indexed you got to get them in the right position and then they'll they won't turn Let's see get that all the way in there and though again they're 14 millimeter on the raybestos calipers yeah so they sucked up right there you can see that on the bottom right there sucked up right in there so that's good turn it by hand Come to the top turn it by hand ratchet on it good and tight pretty tight like that and what did we forget hose put the hose back together so again we have the new washers that came with the new caliper. I can show them to you here. They're on the plug. Now well, there's one there. No one fell off. Here it is. And they are. So bolt washer banjo fitting washer. And this one, it's indexed here. Oh, so you can see it. I'll show it to you. It's dripping pretty good. See it? Bring it in. Right here on the caliper, it's got this little notch where the hose fits into, keeps the hose in the right position. So, probably so it doesn't bind up here. But this one is kind of nice. Some of the other 
other ones that have the square block here don't fit down into the put into the caliper just right and they're kind of hard to get started sometimes this one's really nice so again making sure washer fitting washer bolt so I'm ready to go and again that one's 14 millimeter too and since that's been leaking or dripping my uh, reservoir is probably real low so before I uh, start to bleed my brakes like there's air in these calipers so before I bleed my brakes I'm gonna um, fill up the reservoir and I'm gonna wipe down this anything that's wet so I can tell if I've got a leak or not so good clean paper towels and wipe down everything really well I'm gonna be able to tell if I have a leak when I'm bleeding them and I pump them up pump them up and put them under pressure before I put the tire back on so I can see if I've got a leak or not so then it's just that 12 millimeter head size bolt back into the bracket here here so then we're ready bleed the brakes we can turn it ah, there we go. straighten for you let's see what we got here got Yeah, I show in detail how to bleed the brakes in a separate video when I did the rear brakes some time ago. So I'm not going to go into to how to bleed the brakes in this video. Be sure to watch that video if you like a few different methods of how to bleed the brakes. Well, that concludes the video. If you found it helpful, please subscribe and let me know in the comments. So that was my installation of a new rotor caliper and pads in a 2015 honda crv i hope that you found it helpful again if you did please subscribe and let me know in the comments